Okay, so our topic today is drowning our sorrows. What that has to do with is literally trying to push down and push away any feelings that we don't want to have to feel. Okay? Sometimes, sometimes we have dreams <laughs> about that. <laughs> yeah. But it, it really is, it's, it's really about, it's not, for me, it's not so much drowning our sorrows, because sometimes drowning our sorrows, sorrows means we're going to be doing something, ingesting something, doing something to, to, to numb out and to push down the feelings, okay? So that brings us into, really, more of the emotional component of a person's life and what they haven't un healed, what they haven't unraveled or what they're unwilling to face, okay? Most of humanity will do anything to avoid feeling their feelings, okay? Now, not everyone's going to go to alcohol or drugs. Um, it, you might even do something like go do the, I mean, do something you don't want to do, like shopping. Yes, shopping, playing games, um, even Facebook, sugar, alcohol, drugs, sex, food. There's gambling. Thank you, guys. This is good. Yeah. So, <laughs> so there's lots and lots of things that people do to avoid feeling. See, what people don't realize, can, just imagine this. How, how, many, how long have you ever spent totally alone? Hours, days, weeks, months? Hours. What's the thought, even the thought of being totally alone? Yeah, have you, if you've ever done a division quest, I used to have people on vision quest. I have to sit in a circle for three days, just water. Okay, okay, so, so three days, maybe four. Okay, try four years. I mean, it's not, I mean, I did go grocery shopping, you know what I'm saying? I did go to the store, <laughs> obviously. But I basically went to the desert and was there for four years, burning in the isolation of being with oneself. Okay, so I know the burn, I know what it feels like, I know the avoidance, I know all the things that occur and happen for people to try not to have to feel any distraction whatsoever. You guys, I didn't have any radio, I didn't have music, I wasn't playing games on the comp I didn't do that kind of stuff. I literally was in this place on several acres and out of town, at least a half an hour from any kind of grocery store, okay? So, the burn, I call it the burn, because it is, it's like you feel like you're burning. <laughs> if, you, if you let yourself stay with what it feels like, you're going to feel all this intensity inside your body that if you don't deal with it, if you don't face it and unravel it, it's not going away and you're bringing it with you into your next incarnation. Okay? So all the things that people do to avoid all their feelings. You know, our world now has so many distractions and so many ways to keep you from feeling. You know, it's keep help, you, know, you can find anything you want to avoid feeling. You can be alone, but you can also be constantly distracted, like constantly distracted. So that, so being alone doesn't necessarily mean that you're facing your, your energies or feelings inside, if in fact you're distracting. So, you know, it's like, what's inside everybody's body, uh, people that are on the planet right now, there's a culmination, as you already know this, of lots and lots of past life traumas and horrors and experiences that have been really, really uncomfortable, really intense, okay? If you just look at your lifetime right now, how many people have you lost through death in this lifetime? How many people have just gone away that you really cared about? How many times have you been in relationship and those relationships have ended? Whether you wanted it or not, you still went through a loss, a grieving, a pain, how many experiences have you had in this lifetime of having an attachment to material objects and having those be taken away or lost or somehow destroyed or, you know, and all that pain that happens there as well. So all of your attachments are going to bring you suffering. Every attachment you have, whether it's to a human being or an object or a little critter, or anything whatsoever, whatever your attachments are, those are also great doorways in to unraveling this deep, deep, deep emotional energy that's inside of your body. 
you know, <clears throat> people avoid their emotions. I think you all know that, right? You know, you don't want people to see you cry. <laughs> don't want people to see you upset or in despair or, you know, when, you, when you're in a certain frame of mind, you don't want people to know unless you are good friends or maybe you feel safe with that person. So we've really learned throughout our lives, throughout our culture, that, you know, we put on that happy face. We put on a, you know, we show up and we, we don't let people see and let them know. But also, somehow we also learn growing up as really young children, especially, uh, did you ever, anybody ever have the thing where your parent or grandparent would say, stop crying, I'll give you something to cry about? I had that one. <laughs> My grandmother, you know, different people. But, you know, there's different ways in which parents already tell you, oh, you're not hurt, stop crying, you're not hurt. So all these little ways in which we're, being indoctrinated into the world of how to be in the world, these things that parents do, not that they're trying to mess you up, this is what they grew up with, or they don't know how to handle your emotions or whatever is going on for them. And we just kind of learn that exposing who we are, exposing our feelings, being ourselves is not safe, it's not acceptable. So. We bury it, we hide it. So we've learned really, really, really early to you know, push these energies down. Push them down, don't let them present, okay? Even situations where people, I mean, I have, I have uh, clients where um, like a, a spouse will die, you know, married spouse, children, so a spouse dies. Well, the moms and such, a, or the father, whoever loses the other partner can be in such a distressful state that they don't have the ability to have awareness around what's happening for the children. And the children are going through stuff too. But we usually what can happen is the child will start to caretake the parent because the parent isn't parenting the child, okay? So there's all kinds of different scenarios that contribute to how we've become how we are and how we've all learned to push our stuff down. And I remember years and years ago, I was watching Energy of the World and just watching how things started getting more and more and more intense. Like this is way back, you know, like way back before they started doing the big, remember the jump, bungee jumping thing? Remember when that started becoming a big thing? That's what I call red line. Red line meaning in or, you, you numb out so much that you have to find something so intense to, have, to feel. Okay, so people start pushing the edges, you know, r speeding, r racing, bungee jumping, you know, do doing different things that threatens them, that threatens their well-being, that makes them feel this intense energy move through the body. Well, if you want intense energy move through your body, just open up and feel your feelings. <laughs> That's going to get really intense. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, trust me, really intense, okay? So in, in class and in, uh, workshops, we used to do um, different method methods to help people access feelings. For someone to go into terror, like true terror, that's a major let go. And if you, that's, that's even more intense than bungee jumping or, you know, skydiving or whatever those things, anything that would make you feel like the intense, intense energy moving through your body, well, just try facing the terror that lives inside. It gets really, really intense, okay? And it can be done. Energy, that energy can be released. That's always a good one for people. Most people, when you start hit the, hitting the edges of it, it feels like it's too big, too frightening. So we'll try to avoid that. So all of the feelings, all the emotions, all the energies inside that are contributing to your avoidance, they are intense. I'm not gonna say, oh, you know, feeling your heartbreak, or feeling the loss, or feeling judged, or feeling abandoned, or feeling betrayed. Oh yeah, it's just, it's just this energy going to move through your body. Go ahead, open up to it, let it move through. You guys, all of it is intense. You're going to feel like your heart's shattering, or breaking, like for real. It can feel as though your whole being is literally breaking up, shattering, because it is. So, you know, it's like, I'm not negating the intensity of what, what's, why we want to push these feelings down. 
because it does feel like you're going to die. Straight up, I'm going to tell you, when you open up to allow these feelings to start moving through your body, it does feel like you're going to die. If you truly go all the way into it, the intensity is so big and so intense. Sometimes you feel like you can't do it. Sometimes you feel like you're going to go crazy. Sometimes you feel like uh, you'll never, if you go into it, you'll never come out of it. These are all typical experiences after working with thousands of people and you know, tracking and, and really learning the, the energy of humanity and how we operate. It, it really, for everybody, it was the same. Once they started really opening up to what was inside, they did feel like they were going to die. They did feel like they were going to go crazy. They did feel like they couldn't do it. It was just, you know, it was intense, okay? So, we found ways to numb out. We found ways to avoid. Sometimes I'll literally look at people's energy field and I'll see like almost like a lid on top of the emotional center. So it's not that you don't have emotional energy stuck in all the different chakras and all the different areas of the physical body, but the second chakra is the one that really houses all of your past lives, all, a lot of the emotional energy. So that's your emotional center. It's also the sexual center. So usually when I see a lid on things, I see the lid right on top of that second chakra. And that lid, like right now I'm watching people's lids. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna tell you what's happening. Some of, those, some, some of the energies are, going, are shaking like this. So you might start to be feeling a nervousness in your body. Are you feeling that? Oh yeah, I think a little, but a little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit, yeah. It's yeah. Just, that's just the beginning, that's just the edge, okay? So what's happening is on a, on a subconscious level, at your higher levels, you're already aware that something's going to happen. You don't know what it is, but you know, we're pushing on that energy inside of you. So that lid, you've had a lid on top of things, and that lid has protected you and kept you safe from feeling these old, old, intense feelings, not just from this lifetime, but all your other incarnations. And, you know, it's like once we start taking this lid off, and we say yes, and we give the go-ahead, then, then energies do start to present, and memories come, and oftentimes you'll start seeing memories of past lives. Your different experiences that you've had start to come into your awareness, and they're right, you know what I mean? It's like you, you have memory. And the key is always, always the same. Relax into it, surrender to it. You know, the, as soon as your mind goes into gear, trying to get a grip, then you stop the process. So you want, to let, you want to let the energy move. And you also want to stay totally present in your body. That's another piece that people don't always have. A lot of the people that are doing a lot of emotional work is if you're not having your consciousness in the body, then you're going through all this energy, but you're not releasing it all the way because you're not home to it. Part of the journey and part of the unraveling is you have to know your own experience. And how are you going to do that? If you jump out of your body and your body is going through stuff, are you knowing your experience? I don't think so. So you have to stay here. That means awareness, awareness, awareness. And at the same time, you're so aware and you become the energy so nothing else exists. So now what happens, instead of rather jumping out of your body, now you're so deeply in your body that you have no awareness of anything outside of you. Okay? So you could have a room full of people and you could be so deep in your process you wouldn't have a clue that they're here. Okay? So it's, all, it's the surrender. It's the surrender and the, and the allowing and the saying yes. So next time you start going into avoidance, like, you know, we got the holidays are intense times for people. Partly because there's a lot of um, pain and suffering that has occurred during the holidays. And then sometimes too, there's just the stress of it and wanting to do, some, like if you're preparing something or doing a meal, you want it to be good if you got friends or family coming. You know what I mean? So there's all these stress factors. And if you can just use what's happening in your world when you start to feel the reaction or you start to feel that avoidance, because you, you're going to know the avoidance. The avoidance has a quality of I think I'll go to the dishes right now, or maybe I'll get on the computer and do Facebook right now, or maybe I'll get on the phone and talk to my friend right now. The moment you feel that desire for distraction, 
would be the moment to go, wait a second, something wants to be felt here. I'm avoiding it. So you can make the choice rather than continuing to do the avoiding. And, you know, you really do need to know how to do your, your emotional energy clearing work. And without that, you know, you're kind of like, like a ship without a sail or a rudder, you know what I mean? You don't really know what you're doing. You're trying your best. And see, another thing too is when people are in a feeling state, the mind will kick in trying to analyze, trying to understand, trying to avoid. So here's another little piece of the, the emotional clearing puzzle. The moment you have a mind thought, I don't care what that thought is. It might be, oh, what are people thinking? Or where's this really coming from? Am I going deep enough? Am I doing this right? Any mind thought at all is a distraction and you are no longer in authentic feeling and you are no longer unraveling and releasing the energy that wants to come up and out. Okay, so when you're gonna do your, your work, if you're gonna, you know, when you, so you get triggered, something happens, that's your doorway in, you let the energy move, you f drop into it, you allow it, but every time the mind kicks in, you have to go, ah, no, forget it, Bring your awareness back in, come back into the feeling, and let the feelings be there. It might mean you might cry, it might mean you might scream, it might mean you might just shake, your whole body could be just sh shaking, okay? But you allow it, you allow the body to just do its thing, take over, but you're still consciously aware of the intensity of the feeling that you are experiencing. There, and in that way, you unravel the trauma it comes out of your cells, it comes out of your DNA, it comes out of the blood, the bones, it comes out of your entire body. And then like I said, sometimes in that you're gonna have memories, memories are gonna come. You know, lots of different, different thoughts and awarenesses. But the key is always the surrender, but do not get caught up in the mind because the moment the mind is working and you're thinking, you are not unraveling at a subconscious level, you are recycling. And this is what many, many, many people do, is they'll say things like, well, I've been crying all of my life over the loss of this or over this or, you know, you know the divorce or some, you know, whatever that is, they'll talk and say, yeah, but I've been crying and crying for years and years and years. When's it gonna end? Well, you're crying, but when you're crying, you still got your minds running. You're still in the upper layers of the emotions that are in your conscious awareness. If you don't drop in, it will never end. It will not end, not in this lifetime. It obviously didn't end in past lives, otherwise it wouldn't be in your body now, okay? So the recycling, is it's like it's that same spin, the same story over and over and over, you know, and it doesn't stop. That's only because the person is still listening to the thoughts when they come in rather than just being the energy of the emotion that is arising, okay? So it's a practice, you know, just hearing this and understanding it does not mean you're gonna master it in one time. You have to be willing, you have to want this. And you have to train your body to not have you jump out of your body or push those feelings down. Like the moment it starts to come up, you know, the first thing you wanna do is like, eh, not going there, that's too intense. And people will say that. It's like, I can't do that, I don't wanna go there, I don't wanna face it. Good, keep it in your body and suffer for the rest of your eternity. <laughs> stop whining about it. Yeah, exactly, yeah. You don't wanna feel it, then stop whining, okay? Good. I'll give you something though. <laughs> I won't have to, you're doing it to yourself. So, you know, we've, we've all, we've all done this. We do this. This is what we do. We don't want to feel anything that is uncomfortable. So we found ways to avoid. So drowning our sorrows really does have to do with avoiding. Avoiding, avoiding, avoiding. And that means all the different modalities that we can avoid. Okay? So has anybody used tobacco? Has it, I don't, but has anybody? Has any, how about alcohol? Even if it's moderation, wine, out, uh, beer, hard, hard alcohol. 
any kind of drug stuff, anybody done drugs or, I mean, even, you know, we're in Colorado, so marijuana is legal, so you know, that's another great way to avoid, okay? So there, how about sex, like all the things we listed earlier, okay? So ha if, you've never, if you've ever used or done any of those things, then you're avoiding something inside. Okay, so you guys, here's the deal. I'm going to be lifting some of the lid off today. Yes. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, so, <laughs> so what that means in your world is this. So you're going to forget, but you can go through a lot of really intense feelings. Okay, when if we, when if we take that lid off, and we start opening up the energy field to allow things to start moving, all hell is going to break loose in your body, in your life. Okay, so if you don't want it, then leave. If you want it, stay here. <laughs> yeah, good one. Good one, girl. <laughs> Don't, don't be listening to this clearing if you aren't ready for the acceleration. <laughs> Good for you. Yep. Yep, cool. Okay. So, you might already start to feel a little bit of nervousness, and maybe not. doesn't really matter. Oh, okay. Sorry, guys. So, you guys are showing me what's happening in your energy field. So, some of you are literally like, not at a conscious level, okay, but on an unconscious level, man, they're like putting straps on the, <laughs> on the lid. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> yeah, you know, it's like, okay, let's, let's make sure this lid doesn't come off. <laughs> so what we can do too is not necessarily take the whole lid off, but we can create opening. You know, we'll, we'll just, I'm going to just ask your higher selves and get the go-ahead at that level. So whatever level, whatever you're ready for, it's gonna, it'll push you, but it won't traumatize you. You know what I'm saying? You'll be able to navigate. But always remember the words, surrender, surrender. Lose the mind, no mind thoughts, surrender. Stay in the body, surrender, okay? It'll make it much easier. When you fight it, it gets torturous, really uncomfortable.